Hey there, welcome back to the Springs in the Desert podcast. I'm Jillian, your host, and I'm joined today by our spiritual father, Father Paul. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Jillian, and hello, everybody out there in podcast land. It's good to be with you again. <laughs> it is. I really enjoy recording with uh, with Father Paul, and I, I just told him off air that I need to start recording when we jump on because we have the best and funniest conversations right before we're going to record, and we need to record them and catch them for bloopers, so... Stay yeah, tuned at some point. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm really excited uh, because for the next several weeks, we are going to dive into a little uh, mini series on examining our conscience. And so this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about why it's important to examine our conscience. If you're, if you haven't really been in a routine of that, maybe how to add that to your routine. Um, and this, this will air um, before and during uh, the season of Lent. And so why is it fitting to examine our conscience during the season of Lent? And then we're going to, um, it'll be a little bit different style than some of our other podcasts. The last section of this podcast and then the next few podcasts are really going to be a time for us to pray together and examine our conscience as a community. So we're going to lead you through an examine um, with Father Paul giving some some helpful encouragement and suggestions and um just as his wisdom as, as he uh, leads um, our community uh, so well as a spiritual father. So let's just begin and jump in. You know, Father, what is an examine? Why, why is it good to examine our consciences regularly? Uh, well, I mean, it's just no different than like, why, why is it good to, you know, do uh, ra- random health checks with your body, right? You know, it's the same, <laughs> right, the right. same thing. Um, right. we have to kind of be checking in because, you know, you, you let stuff go, things aren't that big of a deal. And, you know, like when it comes to any physical ailments, like, oh, it'll get better. Oh, it'll get better, but it's getting worse and worse. And then before you know it, you know, there's a problem. So that's the main reason for examining our conscience is to, you know, just, you know, keep tabs on, um, you know, where we are spiritually, but also it's to keep the, the dialogue between, ourselves and uh you know god um uh, to keep that dialogue going because it's really like any relationship and i like to use this uh, analogy and i probably have used this in other places in springs podcasts and talks i've given because it's just such a good uh uh sort of parallel where think about any relationship we have in our lives right um you take take a marriage, right? This is a this is a marriage and family kind of thing here, right? So, if you take a marriage, I mean, what would the relationship be like if we spoke with our spouse, you know, uh, for an hour uh, mm. once a week, and then again, <laughs> you know, some random days during the week because we have to, not because we necessarily want to. That would be probably right. the most awkward relationship <laughs> ever, right? Um, so that's the same thing with with examining our conscience and our relationship with uh, with God. It's that sort of that nightly, you know, that nightly dinner conversation, right? That nightly yeah. um, check in. That you know, you doing okay? It's like, no, I'm not. You know, or how you doing? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So that's, that's a really helpful analogy. Because I think it's we we could all agree very quickly it wouldn't work very well if you're only talking to your spouse once a week for an hour, and if that hour you might be half distracted or sleepy or you know that yeah it takes a lot of time to build relationships and that um, is true with our relationship with God, Absolutely. you know, growing up. And I would say even into my young adult years, a lot of times examining my conscience only happened right before I was going to confession, you know, and not, and certainly the Holy Spirit would reveal, Hey, I need you to go to confession. You know, I want to restore this relationship. But, um, then someone, you know, brought to me this long tradition of, you know, a nightly exam and of that having an exam a part of your, you know, your regular day or even in the morning, you know, talking about the, the day before. Um, and do you have any just, you know, encouragement about including that in part of your daily prayer or, you know, we're going to be diving into an exam, but what might maybe a, a shorter daily exam and look like? How could someone frame that in their prayer? That's that's an excellent point because yeah that whole idea of the uh, the daily uh, examination of conscience is extremely important and actually is sort of um, at the uh, sort of the foundational crux of the Christian prayer life. That's something you'll find in 
many, if not most, or even all um, monastic uh, mm. prayer books and monastic prayer rules and everything like that, you know, that the nightly communal forgiveness at Compline or, or what have you, you know, and some, uh, mm -hmm. some do it in the morning, but you know, whatever, some people are morning people, some are night people, but yeah, <laughs> right. I think, you know, nightly examination of conscience is good. And so what is that, what does that look like? Well, it might not be as robust as it would be like if you were preparing for the sacrament of reconciliation, but you know, just go down the quick list of like run through your day. Think about your interactions yeah. with people. Think about mm. what you said, because let's face it, you get to the end of the day, you know what you've done and said that's wrong, right? You know, you know, right? You had a good day. You had that's a bad so day. true. <laughs> you, you know what the day is. So, so you just go through your day kind of and yeah. let those, you know, and it, I wouldn't think it doesn't have to be, we don't have to be like, you know, ultra scrupulous about this. It's not like every breath of every day, what did I do? It's just like, you you know, you had a bad interaction with a coworker or with your spouse or, or you know, you you maybe gave somebody an angry gesture while driving, those kind of things. Like, you yep. know, <laughs> you know, go through because those are the little things that create bigger cracks in our relationships um, down the road and especially the relationship uh, with our Lord. And it seems to me if we are examining, you know, nightly or even even if that's a lot for you, like even in the beginning, like weekly, like before we're going to receive yeah. the Eucharist, you know, mm, um, yep. we find that our sins are not so much less burdensome, but maybe they're not as heavy, right? Because we're not carrying them with us for six months at a time or right. or a year at a time, you know, we're, you know, kind of going through them all the time and maybe... um you know, adjusting the weight a little bit of, of the load and all of these things. And, you know, we do have to tie in the whole, like, uh, efficacy of the Eucharist to forgive sins thing in, in conjunction with this. Otherwise, it doesn't really work. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Right, yeah. It's yep. almost like these this duality of these sacraments that they kind of live in this symbiotic mm. relationship. If we can use that analogy there, you know, yep, where yep. one goes hand in hand. They're not, like, mutually exclusive, but at the same time, hmm. you know. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's restoring you to communion with with God, you know, exactly. and reconciling that. Yeah, that's 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 beautiful. That and I just how important it is, especially you know, for this community with the crosses that we're carrying of infertility and loss, that we desire restoration and healing in so many areas of our life. That um, you know, to to exclude that from our relationship with God doesn't quite fit. It doesn't quite make sense. You know, if we're looking for bodily healing or maybe some mental health, you know, restoration, that we should also include those those thoughts and and structure with um, you know our marriage and of course with God. So uh, that's yeah, that's really helpful. We um, as we dive into and examine in a few minutes, you know, Lent. It, like you just said, we can do it every night and every week, you know, maybe before we receive the Eucharist. Um, but maybe, you know, Lent, why, you know, we are, we're going to dive into an examine as a community together to examine our consciences during the season of Lent. And I'm wondering if you could just speak a little bit into um, how it might be fitting, right? Not only as springs in the desert, right? But to enter into Lent, um, by examining our consciences really thoroughly to prepare for Easter. Why, why might that be fitting? Mm -hmm. Well, the entire season of Lent really speaks to the overarching narrative of basically Adam and Eve's and then subsequently our, uh, not only sinfulness, but our expulsion from paradise, right? So that's kind of Lent uh, at the beginning is I mean, I'm speaking now, I'll, full disclosure, more from a little bit of a Byzantine perspective uh, regarding like sure. the imagery and, and those sort of things, but it applies across the board none, nonetheless, right? So, <laughs> you know, we, we notice in the, you know, in the beginning, there's sort of this theme of, 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 you know, things change, right? The colors change, right? We're putting, we're covering yeah, yeah. Up statues, right? We're doing all these different <laughs> things, right? So something's going on. What, what is going on here? Why are we doing this? Just because like, that's what we're supposed to do? Well, no, it, it, it signifies a certain type of separation, right? Between us mm. and, um, mm. and God, right? So yeah. it gives that certain separation. And the point of that is to have us reflect on that relationship, right? To have us reflect on, our sins. And um, in, in the Eastern tradition, we have a beautiful prayer. It's called the prayer of St. Ephraim. And it's in uh, three stanzas, right? So it's uh, 
Lord and master of my life, spare me from the spirit of indifference, despair, lust for power, and idle chatter. Instead, bestow upon me a spirit of integrity, humility, patience, and love. Now, the last part, this is the important part. Lord, let me see my own sins and not judge my brothers and sisters, for you are blessed forever and ever. Amen. Right? <laughs> so that's, that's the crux <laughs> of the matter, Jillian. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it is. It is. Wow. Right. So, so the whole <laughs> idea of Lent is a time to turn inward in order to bring ourselves back out, right? It's not like a selfish mm. inward. It's a, a deep right, look right. into ourselves along with the cycle of the church to just say like, okay, this is time for me to spend on myself and, and, you know, focusing on what I'm, you know, giving up like that sacrifice, right? The reason we sacrifice something is you know, for years, you know, my brother and I would be like, well, I'm going to be able to not play Mario longer than you. Oh yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I won't eat chocolate. Okay. Well, watch that. I'm not going to eat any pizza. Right. So that's what it becomes. But what we're really doing is we're emptying ourselves of those earthly uh, pleasures, right? Those earthly things in order right. to fill ourselves up with Jesus Christ. And that's, mm. that's the whole point of that sacrifice. So like, let's say like what a lot of people do, you know, you're fasting from Netflix or social media or something like that. So rather than say like, okay, I'm not going to go on Facebook, but I'll go on Instagram instead. Like, no, <laughs> let's not do that. Mm -hmm. It'll be instead, you know, well, I'm not going to watch TV. So for that half hour every day, I'm going to, um, you know, reflect on, on Christ, reflect, you know, examine my conscience. I'm going to read some spiritual reading would do something. Right. And so we replace the, uh, the earthly stuff with more, uh, heavenly things. And then mm. that leads to, um, you know, God willing leads us to, to repentance. Um, yeah, yeah. that's, that's a really beautiful way of putting it that I'm going to reflect on during Lent. And I think that it's a, a fitting time to, start diving into an examine then that we have these, you know, the why and the how and the importance of it. And so listeners, what we're going to do is we are going to link uh, the examination of conscience that the team has written. It's, um, it's really a supplement to your, your maybe regular examination of conscience. So we, um, a lot of the things on here are going to be particular to a season of infertility or a season of loss and maybe some some temptations or or struggles that um, we know this community has might be experiencing. And so I'm going to read through the examine and give uh, you know some time for silence and some um, a few moments of prayer. And um, along the way, Father is going to add uh, you know maybe some some thoughts and some wisdom. Um, in between the points. So wherever you're at, if you're able to just take a moment and pause and maybe sit, or maybe you have your journal out or wherever you do uh, your best prayer or examining, um, you could either pause and go to that space or come back to this later, but we're going to, we're going to dive right in. So our examine um, on the website that I said we're going to link to, it has some other helpful things like how often should I go to confession, preparing for confession, examining your conscience, which dove into a little bit about what Father said. Um, and Father uh, helped us write this, so it, this will be a really great, um, it'll be a really great tool for you as we go through this. So I'm just going to take a moment uh, to pause and then we will begin. On examining my relationship with God, have I given in to despair and the belief that God has forgotten me, does not love me, or is punishing me? Can God forget the being he created out of love? Can he? Is that possible? Have I missed Mass on Sundays and our holy days without just cause? Just cause is not necessarily subjective. <laughs> we find, right, we could spin that. Just, we know what's just cause and what's not. But if it is for a just cause, do not beat yourself up over that, right? There is a just cause. Just remember to keep holy the Sabbath, keep the Lord first, and to always always, always acknowledge him, especially on Sunday. 
Am I allowing difficulty in praying during this season to become an excuse for turning away from God? Don't let that become an excuse. Let it become motivation, right? Use that to fight, pray through it, fight through it. If you're distracted 25 times in 10 minutes, turn back 26 times. It doesn't doesn't matter. It's every time you get to have these micro conversions every single time. So you were just given 26 opportunities to return to the Lord. Does my prayer life look like bargaining with God, promising him time in exchange for my desires? Does the Lord really want or need anything? that we can trade him for something that we desire. The only thing he wants is us. He wants you, right? He wants your love. And it's difficult when we're struggling, when we have these, these, you know, deep, deep desires, these deep, deep wounds. But that is the point of reconciliation. We have to get through these wounds, get through the pain and realize why God is there. He's not there necessarily to grant our every wish, but he is there to hold us, to hug us, just like the father in the parable of the prodigal son. Out of desperation, weakness, and or lack of trust in the Lord, have I pursued medical interventions that go against God's design for my body, the good of marriage, and the teachings of the church? If you find this applicable to yourself in your examination, and it's something that is gnawing at you, don't despair. Simply return to the Lord. Do not despair. Have I felt unjustly pressured into such things by my spouse, causing feelings of resentment, distrust, or even hatred that directly affect the sacramental unity of our marriage? Yes, our relationship with our spouse is parallel to our relationship with God. And if we are struggling with that communication, how hard are we struggling in our communication with God? So if we feel resentment or have been pressured or feel that we have pressured, this is something to bring uh, before the Lord, but also before our spouse and, and, and perhaps, you know, having that long, long overdue discussion with one another, because the conversation with our spouse and the conversation with God is nearly one and the same. Listeners, I am praying for you. Father Paul is praying for you uh, as we wrap up this examination on our relationship with God. Um, if there are any any of these points that stir in your heart uh, a desire to maybe get a little bit of direction, um, we'll make sure to link Father Paul's email in the notes. Um, he is leading a number of people in our community through spiritual direction or just some simple conversations if you have questions. Um, an examine, I know for me, can sometimes bring up a lot of really difficult feelings or frustrations, but the Lord wants you to live joyfully and abundantly, and and he loves you so much. And I know as we were praying through this and Father Paul was asking some questions and guiding us through this, uh, there were a lot of tears that were brought to my own eyes. And um, so just know that you're not alone wherever you're at, that a season of infertility and loss can uh, certainly, um, it can certainly be difficult, uh, but the Lord has has great things in store, and um, I I pray that there is some consolation for you uh, in this time of examining our conscience. Um, and I invite you uh, to the next episode we uh, where we are going to examine our relationship with our spouse. Thank you, Father Paul. Thanks, Julian.